Students, this is the first of two recordings focused on the finals review packet. This is the help video for pages four through 11. So every starred problem, we're gonna work on partially, not gonna do it all the way through. You're told right here, have need do. We know it's not a 30, 60, 90. We know it's not a 45, 45, 90, because that 19 degrees there. We know it's not a have two sides and a third side because we don't have two sides. So we're going to use Sokotoa. That would make this the opposite, this the adjacent, and this the hypo. Have. We have the adjacent side need. We need the hypo. I've got an A-H combo in so ka toa ka ka cosine. So we are going to do cosine theta over 1 equals A over H. Cosine 19 degrees over 1 equals A which is 16 over H, which is our X. Cross multiply. Don't touch a calculator until your X is by itself. So taking a look here, you're going to have cosine 19 times X equals 16. You're still not done here. We need to divide out the cosine 19 so your x is 16 divided by the cosine of 19. Now that your x is by itself, now you may get a calculator. Taking a look here, we have both a 45, 45, 90 leg leg, leg root 2, that's a 45, 45, 90, 30, 60, 90, Thirty, sixty, ninety. short leg, short leg root 3, short leg times 2, everything goes back to the short leg. So using these two principles, we come over here. Now, even though you have an X over here, you never focus only on what you're working on. You focus on what you have, not with what you need. 45, 45, 90. The legs are equal. So this is going to be 6 root 6, this is going to be 6 root 6. Going this way, you times by root 2. Now, be very careful. You're going to end up with 6 root 12, but that's not exactly the case. Because 6 root 12, you need to factor that 12 out. I have a pair of twos, the twos are going to come out. So 6 root 12 becomes 12 root 3. That's important that you factor that out whenever possible. Now coming to here, this is your 30, 60, 90. That would make your X your short leg. Short leg. 2 long leg, U times by 2, short leg to hypo, U times by root 3. So this reads something times 2 is 12 root 3. That's how that reads. Something times 2 equals 12 root 3. Well, I'm going to simply divide the 2 out, and 
I get my something is 6 root 3. Now, if I were to times that by root 3, root 3 times root 3 is 3, this would end up being 18. These ones back here, there's no star here, but really simple. Quadrilaterals, four-sided shapes always add up to 360. If this is a parallelogram, the two key things you want to watch out for is opposite angles are going to be congruent. And because of the parallel sides, consecutive interior angles are going to add up to 180. Trapezoid, couple, couple properties you want to watch out for there is in, in any trapezoid. So I'm going to draw just a kind of a regular old trapezoid. We have two parallel sides. Those are called the bases. I would get in the habit of stretching those bases out so you can see the parallel sides. These angles on either side of a leg add up to 180. Why? Because they're consecutive interior angles. Consecutive interior angles. This is all the way back to unit two. Consecutive interior angles, same side of the stir stick. Between the lines, they add up to 180. Now, in an isosceles trapezoid, two equal sides, what you want to watch out for there is the base angles are going to be congruent. So those are the two properties of trapezoids and angles you want to watch out for. So in this case here, this is not a parallelogram. These two angles are not equal, but since I have two equal sides, I have two equal angles. That means that 6x plus 19 can come over here. And then from here, you know that our consecutive interior angles, which these are, add up to 180. Or you can see it like this. This 20x plus 5 is also here. And then you can think of it like this. that a quadrilateral adds up to 360, and you can say all four of these equations add up to 360. Both will work. Um, these are midpoints. Do the instructions say that? They should. I must have gotten cut off. Okay. Yes, both of these are mid segments, which means their midpoints should be hatch marks around them. Forgot to add those. I apologize. So here, I will just color code it for you. Here's the simple reality going on here. Is that median? That's a median. Equals the average of the bases. The medium equals the average of the bases. Circle plug chug, median. 5x equals one base, x plus seven, the other base, eight x minus five over two over one. Cross multiply, solve, and plug it back in.
for all of these equations, the first thing I'd like you to do is shade the equation. Just shade it. Shade the shape and identify in your brain what it is. This is a trapezoid. So you want to write the area of a trapezoid equation. Area equals the average of the bases times the height. This, you shade it. By shading, it helps your brain register what the shape is. This is a triangle. Area equals base times height over 2. Coming down here, shade, rectangle, area equals length times width, here, shade, triangle, area equals base times height over 2. So this one, once you write the equation, then you simply circle plug chug. We're given the area, so it goes here. And we have one base is eight, the other base is three, and our height is this unknown. So there's your x. Solve. A couple ways you can do this. You can distribute the, um, no, you don't need to distribute the x there. First, you can just add the 8, eight and 3, which is 11. Multiply the two both sides. Get that out. It says, find the area of each regular polygon, leave your answer in simplest form. That simplest form is another way of saying exact terms. Remember exact terms? You've got three things. You have reduced improper fractions, you have simplified radicals, and you leave it in pie form if you're dealing with the circle. That's exact terms. So taking a look here, this is an equilateral triangle. So all three sides are 11 root 3. Now, even though you can use, you can use two different equations here. Area equals perimeter times apothem over 2, or area equals base times height over 2. This works for all regular polygons. This only works for regular equilateral triangles. We're going to do that both ways so that you can see that it works both ways. So first off, we're going to do this perimeter times apothem over 2. times the bottom over 2. So my perimeter, really simple, you just walk it around, you already have it. It's going to be 11 root 3 times 3, that's your perimeter. Your apothem right here, boom, we don't know. It's going to go like this, and this is going to be over 2. Here's your apothem, we don't know it, so we're going to get close here. Equilateral triangle, that means each corner is 60. That means this right here has to be a 30, 60, 90 triangle. This whole thing is 11 root 3. To get this side, you're going to cut it in half. So it's 11 root 3 over 2. And then we come this way. There's your short leg. Short leg to long leg is times root 3. So you ask yourself this simple question, what times root 3 
is 11 root 3 over 2. And it's simply going to be 11 over 2. So my apothem over here is going to be 11 over 2. So a lot of you are really uncomfortable with this fraction, so I'm going to take it out. Instead of dividing by 2, we're going to do this. 11 root 3 times 3 times 11 over 2 times 1 over 2. That way I get everything on a level playing field. Now we simply multiply what I have here. 11 times 11 is 121 times 3. So I'm going to get 363 root 3 over 4. And you are done. Area equals perimeter times apothem over 2. Now, we're going to do it the other way, which is base times height over 2. My base is 11 root 3. My height would be all the way down like this. We don't have it. Over 2. So let's take a look at what we do have here. Once again, in here, now the green, we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle going this way yet again. That would make 11 over 2, our short leg, excuse me, 11 over 2 root 3. This would be for the yellow squiggle. I got too many things going on here. It would be 11 root 2, excuse me, 11 root 3 over 2. And then you times by root 3, and I'm going to end up with 33 over 2. For your height, coming down here, 33 over 2. Get it all in the same playing field. That's going to be 11 root 3 times 33 over 2 times 1 half. 11 times 33. So you get the same thing, 363 root 3 over 4 area equals units squared. Two ways to do the same problem. Rotating clockwise, rotating clockwise 90 degrees, clockwise. There's two different directions, counterclockwise and clockwise. Clockwise is to the right, counterclockwise is to the left. So what you do is for both of these, you're going to end up switching your X and Y. Switch and flip either to the right or to the left. So if I were to do it clockwise, it'd be yx, yx, and clockwise, I'd flip the sign on the right. Counterclockwise, you flip the sign on the left. So we're going clockwise, so we're going to flip the sign on the right. So step number th one here, we're going to get our coordinates.
First you switch. And then you change the signs to the right. So your K prime is going to be 1, negative 3, I mean 1 positive 3, L prime is 3 positive 1. M prime is zero, negative two. Connect. It's a little hard to see what's going on here, so you check any two points starting from the origin. I'm gonna do K to K prime, coming real close. From the origin to K, you draw a line and then to K prime. You look carefully. One, does that look like 90 degrees? The answer is yes. Two, has it gone clockwise? The answer is yes. I expect you to correct the problems one through 30. You're working in pencil and correcting in red pen.